This is Mitchell Zoller from Global Medical News Network. I'm at the annual scientific sessions of the American College of Rheumatology in Philadelphia, and I'm speaking with Dr. John Carter, who's Chief of Rheumatology at the University of South Florida in Tampa, who gave a talk, a uh, trial comparing two different antibiotic regimens with placebo in uh, treating chlamydia-induced reactive arthritis. And so, Dr. Carter, what did you find um, in this study? So essentially what we did was we, we enrolled patients who had undifferentiated spondyl arthritis. And in order to be randomized to treatment, they had to be PCR positive for chlamydia, either in blood or synovial tissue. So the purpose of that was trying to establish more definitive diagnosis or definitive data that suggests that chlamydia was the trigger of their arthritis. And then if they met the criteria of being PCR positive, then they were randomized into one of three groups. Uh, two of them were two different combination antibiotic groups, and one of them was placebo. It was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. The primary endpoint was after six months of therapy with uh, the, the medications, and we found that 63% of the patients randomized to combination antibiotics were considered responders versus 20% on placebo, and that was statistically significantly different. And the majority of the secondary endpoints were also statistically significantly better in the combination antibiotics versus the placebo. Right. So it suggested that, and we also know from previous data that in synovial tissue analysis in patients with persistent chlamydia, these chlamydia are alive, they're in an aberrant state, so it's not like an active infection, but they're still viable, so that suggests that perhaps antibiotics can work, and that's what our study right. suggested. And, and these could have been either uh, general chlamydial infections preceding it or um, respiratory infections? Right. The majority, about three quarters were genital and about a quarter in our study, right. and about a quarter were respiratory. Right. And so, do you see these findings of having any relevance to, in general practice, treatment of patients with these kinds of reactive arthritis? Yeah, well, reactive arthritis in, is generally, I think, underdiagnosed. Um, if you, you know, do the epidemiological data, it suggests that the annual incidence might be as high as rheumatoid arthritis, but certainly we don't diagnose it as much as rheumatoid arthritis. Um, the problem is that we don't have a definitive diagnostic test for the condition. So in the, in the practicality in the clinic, you can't say for sure often that chlamydia was the trigger. So if we knew that chlamydia is the trigger, then I think that the, you could try this antibiotic approach in the clinic. But oftentimes the infection can be asymptomatic. The patient may not admit to having the infection. You may not ask the question. So oftentimes we just don't know. And in patients that you're not sure if chlamydia is the trigger, then I think the data is a little bit not quite as convincing whether or not you should try it. I think if they have the arthritis that fits the category and if they have a history of chlamydia at any point, really, then I think that's probably enough data to suggest that you should try this treatment. This is Mitchell Zoller from Global Medical News Network.